So we have a scale database now, and the database is huge. Before we start auditing it, can we identify any trends or patterns in the data? The SQLite file is a binary file. We can't just uh, examine it, but we can run various tools to look at the data in a more tabular format. We have a script called scale to CSV, which I just run the help, and it shows you some of the parameters it takes. We can take this file, this script, run it on our file and produce a comma separated uh, value a tabular list of data. But what I'm going to do is convert the data into an into a tabular list that is suitable for Emacs's org mode. So if I look at the file now, you can see that what we have is a whole bunch of records. There's about 40,000 records. And we divide them into various fields. For instance, there's path and line of the uh, file and line where an error occurs. Uh, a message, this message simply comes from every tool. A checker, each, uh, each tool divides its, its uh, diagnostic analyzers into a bunch of checkers. For instance, uh, Visual Studio gives every checker uh, the uh, name of C with a number past it. So this diagnostic here clearly comes from Visual Studio. In fact, if we look at the tool section, we see it comes from Visual Studio, but we also have diagnostics from the other tools as well. And the rule, this is the cert rule that uh, this code is allegedly violating. Uh, this rule simply says declare identifiers before using them. So Visual Studio thinks that at that bit of code, there's an identifier being used that has not been declared. And the other statistics we have are the risk assessment metrics. The most important one here is the priority. Met diagnostics with a high enough priority, like this one, are diagnostics that are easy to exploit. The exploit is severe. It may involve, say, remote code execution, and it's easy to rewrite the code to fix it. These are the ones that a client should fix first. Items with a low priority are ones that are difficult to exploit. The exploit doesn't buy you much, and they're very difficult to fix, so it's less important to fix them. So looking at 40,000 diagnostics in any manner is difficult, so we're going to try and run some correlation tests. Uh, the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table. Uh, this is similar to a, an Excel pivot table. It simply identifies the cert rules uh, by their title and their priorities. and identifies which rules fall, off, fall under which priority and how many diagnostics there are. So let me do a bit of editing here. And now we can see that the priorities, I'm going to move the 12 and 18 over. And now we can see the priorities, uh, how many rules, how many violations there are for each rule. Let me sort by numeric. So as we can see, the most egregious rule would probably be the one about dereferencing null pointers. Apparently we found 735 alleged violations of this rule. Some of those may be false positives, but we have to go in and check. Likewise, these other rules on the top are ones that uh, are uh, have the highest priority, such as evaluate if integer expressions in a larger size before comparing or assigning to that size. That's a common uh, error in secure coding. Detect and handle standard library errors, such as if malloc fails. So this gives you an idea of what rules are important to fix, the ones at the top here, and what rules are less important, the rules at the bottom. So when we audit diagnostics, we will go with these rules in this order, from top to bottom. And ideally, the clients should fix errors starting from top to bottom as well. So I'm going to run one other correlation. Uh, rules by tool. Simply, uh, we're simply asking which rules were found discovered by which tools. So our correlation script will will run here for a little bit and give us another table. If we bring this in Emacs org mode, oops. Now 
we can see that uh, each tool found several violations of its own. Um, we can also see several things about the rules. First of all, there are a couple of recommendations. This item is a recommendation, and I know this because the number 01 is less than 30. The rules are numbered 30 on upward, and the recommendations are under 30. Secondly, this is a C++ rule, so for uh, the scale audits, we can ignore this rule, and we can ignore the recommendations, and we can focus just on the rules, the items with a number above 30 that end in C. But if I sort here for coverity, you can see, for instance, that this rule, ER33, only coverity detected any errors with this rule. There are several other rules, like this one and this one, that only coverity detected. If I go over to Fortify, there are several rules, like this one and this one, that only Fortify detected. And in fact, if you look at each of these columns, you'll discover that each tool had a set of rules that only it detected violations of. So let me just go and look at the total uh, to conclude things. So overall we have over 40,000 diagnostics, but you'll notice that uh, a lot of these are for recommendations, and the first rule to be violated is this one, int31-c. Uh, this one is about uh, doing integer conversions without losing uh, significant bits or misinterpreting the sign, such as converting a negative number to a very large positive number. There's almost a thousand diagnostics for this rule. Uh, most of them discovered by PCLint, but several other tools also found them. So PCLint clearly discovered the bulk of the rules, although many of those rules may be false positives, but we will look at that when we actually do the audit.